all I want is for people to crave the mole. I want to leave them wanting more. I think there's no better food that you have that you don't stay thinking about. This mole, whether it's not tamal de mole or there's just the chicken with mole, all you want to have more and more and more of it. Mole is a comfort food and it should be something that you want to crave and eat over and over again. When we came to LA and we were part of the same community here, everybody embraced chocolate because everybody missed the chocolate and everybody wants chocolate. We want that connection to Oaxaca. We, we never really cut our umbilical cord from Oaxaca, so we just want to keep feeding that. I, I'm trying to think back, and I, I think like ever since I was a little baby, like chocolate has been part of my life always. And now with my kids, it's part of their life always. So it's just something that it was we were born into. It was the most beautiful, I would say, duality living of both learning to be American, but also holding on so tightly to your Oaxaca roots. The way that our family came to LA, this beautiful city, was through Tijuana. We walked the border from Tijuana to LA with backpacks full of food. From the moment we moved in here, from the moment we migrated and we had the restaurant, all the customs remained alive. Everything that had to do with Oaxaca culture, we were part of. We we're very blessed to live in a city that embraced our culture so, so vividly and so openly. My dad actually came to the U.S. in 93. He was actually making a scout with his brother. There was a big economic collapse in Mexico, and so they lost all their assets, and he was looking around, and he was like, I guess I gotta get out of here. He moved to LA, and he didn't know what to do, so he was looking around, but he saw a lot of Oaxacans who missed their, their home. He said, well, you know, all these Oaxacans miss their food. I miss my food. I should sell food. My mom would actually would go around, shop for, you know, playudas, the mole, quesillo, ship it over to Tijuana. My dad would drive down, get it, and he would sell the products door to door, and he was selling at the corner of 8th and Normandy. He saw a space that kept closing and opening and closing and opening. And one day he said, you know, if it closes again, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna open something up. And he was telling everybody this idea, I'm gonna open up a Oaxacan restaurant. And everybody was like, are you crazy? That's like the worst idea ever. No one's gonna go to a Oaxacan restaurant. No one knows what that is. So I think that the more people told him not to do it, he probably, the more he wanted to do it. And the place finally closed down, he took it over, and he opened up. And he, I mean, he didn't even have a menu. He just opened up. And a lady walked in and she's like, what do you sell? He's like, oh, we have uh, tamales, uh, mole, we have, you know, clayudas. And she's like, how much for a tamal? And he's like, all right, I'll, I'll give me a second. He runs back, he brings it back. He says, how much would you pay for it? She says, oh, that looks like $5. And he writes, tamal de mole, $5. And then she, she wrote the full menu. She, she did the pricing. Uh, about a year in, you know, he, he goes into the restaurant. And he's used to just seeing Oaxacans either. He was a Oaxaca restaurant for Oaxacans. And one day he walks in, there's all these white people there. And he's trying to figure out, like, he's like, what's going on? And someone shows him that the Galagetza was on the cover of the LA Times food section on the article written by Jonathan Gold. And that really just changed the whole trajectory of his life. Of our lives. Of our lives. Yeah. It really did. Jonathan Gold changed our lives. You know, the word Galagetza means to build community. That is a direct translation of what the word is. So when I see three generations um, of families eating in one table, and at least one of them had grown up in LA, and the idea that we have built their Oaxacan palette means so much to me, because I take that like it's a huge responsibility in my community, because that will anchor you to your ancestors, that will anchor the future generations to your food, to your community, and I think being an anchor for food for the immigrant community, I think is one of the most important things we've done here in the city. Mm -hmm.